So you're probably sat there wondering why Deity AI keeps absolutely spanking your ass just like when report cards come home. Well luckily for you, I have 5 huge mistakes many players make in Civilization 6. And in terms of my credentials for giving advice in Civ 6, I have none, but let's get into the video. Now the first mistake is me. Wait, what the f who added that in the script? Now the first actual mistake is building up before you spread wide. And no, it's probably not what you're thinking. What I mean by this is expanding your empire and settling new cities before you start building on your cities and adding districts and improving tiles. And you may be thinking, what are you saying you muffin? But no, I have good reasoning for this. When you're playing on deity, you're always going to be bound to be behind on science and culture because the AI deity is stupendously handicapped. So even if you had a few cities early on with solid districts, it's not going to be enough. You realistically want to aim for about 10 cities if possible. And then once you settle those 10 cities, then you can focus on getting districts and working towards your victory type. There's also limited land, so if you're not settling early on, the deity AI will happily settle all the land. So you really want to take advantage of settling early on, because you're not going to have the same chance to do so later. Now, mistake number two is building industrial zones early on. Now, before you start flooding the comment section with hate speech and insults towards my mother, please let me explain myself. Industrial zones early on don't provide much adjacency bonuses and are kind of just a waste of production. It would be better spent on a campus or commercial hub as their adjacency bonuses are a lot more accessible early on and industrial zones require aqueducts and dams and other districts for their adjacency bonuses therefore making industrial zones early on is kind of just a waste of production where production could be better spent elsewhere so you should wait till after you've built those districts to then make your industrial zone because those districts will just act as laxatives that will just shit out production and don't get me wrong you definitely want to make industrial zones as early as possible because they're going to make your cities juicy and thick but rushing an industrial zone early on where you don't have any other infrastructure is really just a waste in my opinion but i do recommend planning out your city with the map tax and then you can make sure that you're getting the best industrial zones you possibly can especially if you have the better map tax mod because it shows you what the adjacency bonuses would be so you can make the best industrial zones mankind has ever seen now before we continue this video is sponsored by absolutely no one so please like and sub mistake number three is one that i'm most definitely a culprit of and it's focusing on your economy before you focus on your military If I were to describe the early game in Civ to someone, I would say imagine that you are Harry Styles and the barbarians are hordes of 13 year old girls swarming towards your cities. Now whilst this might be a pedophile's dream, this is definitely far from ideal for us. Now in the early game of Civ, you definitely want to be prioritizing your military over like monuments and builders. I'd say at the bare minimum, you want your first two productions to be military units and then you can maybe do a monument or a builder. The only exception to this rule is if you have like lots of city states around you that are killing off the barbarian camps, then you'll probably say but as a general rule of thumb you want to be focusing on your military early on plus you'll already be behind on science and culture and with only having a few cities early on a catch-up attempt will be very futile and wasting production on districts and economy early on is also going to leave you very vulnerable as you're not putting your production towards military strength meaning you're going to be an easy target for barbarians and that's just going to set you further back as you're going to spend extra time trying to repay your cities it will leave your fate in the hands of the neighboring ai civs who most definitely invade you and take everything that you have ever loved dearly. Moving on to mistake number four, which is the first governor you choose. Now, for most mentally sane people, you'll either be looking at getting Pengala or Magnus as your first governor. Pengala is good in the early game as he can provide you a small boost to your science and culture with his base ability and first few promotions. However, he definitely falls off in the late game as the extra science and culture he can produce isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Even when going towards a science victory, his space in this initiative, promotion providing an extra 30% towards space projects, isn't as much as you can do if you well utilize the Giga Chat himself, Magnus. Now, in my opinion, Magnus is better in the early game and the late game than Pingala. Let me tell you guys why. In the early game, Magnus can help you boom your cities with his base ability, providing you with an extra 50% for plot harvests and feature removals, making chopping more useful in catapulting a city's growth and production. His first two options for promotion are also insane. I'm not going to get into them too deep, but basically they are broken as hell, and as any good Samaritan does, we want to abuse the heck out of them. Ultimately, when it comes towards choosing one for the early game, I would lean towards Magnus. Whilst Pingala can help you climb the tech tree a little quicker and stay a little bit more up to date with the other civs, Magnus just helps you build a much stronger and bigger city earlier on, which is going to become very helpful. 
helpful and it's going to catapult your science and your culture a lot more later on. When it comes to the late game, Magnus, with his vertical integration promotion, will be able to provide you with more production towards a science victory than Pingala's space race promotion if used correctly. Therefore, I would normally go with Magnus over Pingala, but it's also just a preference thing. If you're a Pingala lover boy or girl for that matter, I will still accept you. I will question your IQ and mental capacity every day, but I will accept you nonetheless because everyone plays slightly different in Civ and whatever works, works. Mistake number five is one that I'm most definitely yet again a culprit of and you may be starting to think that me and my entire existence is mistake ridden and you would most definitely be correct. After having a midlife crisis at the age of 17, I'm now ready to get into the fifth mistake which is neglecting your amenities. Amenities are often overlooked but are one of the most important things in Civ. Having 3 plus amenities provides a city with 10 plus boost to all yields and a city with 5 plus amenities will provide you with a 20% boost to all yields which is crazy and having negative amenities will have the opposite effect to these yields so not focusing on amenities makes sure that you have adequate amenities means that you're just losing yields that you could potentially be getting so not focusing on amenities is just like repetitively kicking yourself in the balls obviously it's insanely hard to have five amenities in all cities but entertainment complexes luxury resources some wonders and other amenity related buildings will help you achieve this goal in the early game amenities aren't as important because you don't have as much yields to be either gaining or losing but once you're starting to get to the mid and late game you definitely want to make sure that your amenities maxed out as much as possible just so you can get those extra yields it's gonna go a long way trust me now if you want to become the best player in all of Civ 6 and find out what's stopping you in the early game from decimating the deity AI just like I decimate the toilet the morning after having Indian food check out this video and thanks for watching guys do I have to say guys and girls at the end of the video like it's the word guys gender specific man it's 2023 you gotta be careful there's someone around every corner waiting to cancel you